Greetings everyone, this is Dungan here with episode 3 of my School of Thought series. And in this episode we'll be covering mob spawners and how they should be used in maps. But first, mo most importantly, would be how they actually work in the game. And I've been wanting to do a sort of tutorial on this for a while. And I finally got around to doing it. And here we go. So there's three important things to know about how mobs spawn from a spawner. The first is where I would what what I would call where they where the feet decide. So this is the area, this glass cube of where the mob's feet will go. I'll go over what the feet are in a minute, but this glass area is eight wide by eight long by three high. The spawner is in the middle of the height and the spawner is one block and it 8 by 8 is even and it determine where the spawner is placed in the 8 by 8 cube, uh, square is where the coordinates are um, the four long gaps between well, where it goes four diagonal is where both x and the z get smaller as you can see on there the negative numbers are getting larger which means the coordinate is getting smaller and that is where the spawner is placed in relation to the 8x8 cube. Alright, the second thing about spawners is when they decide to spawn. For the most part they spawn roughly 200 to 799 ticks apart from when they spawn previously and it's slightly varied between the spawners but that's the fastest it spawns. Some of them spawn slightly slower. But when they spawn is when you get within 16 blocks of it. When you start seeing the mob inside spinning and when you see the flames show up. That is when the mobs are capable of spawning. And that is very important later on. But it is only 16 blocks away from the spawner. And it is a cube. So you can see I'm 16 blocks away here and it's the same if I go diagonal. It is a square around, a square radius around the spawner is uh, the area with, in, with, in which they can decide to spawn in. And the third thing is the mob special needs for the mob to spawn. Uh, it is per mob basis. This is a zombie, so they have different spawning rules as opposed to pigs or sheep, for example. And the six hostile mobs. The all all six of these hostile mobs here have the same spawning rules. Endermen's creepers, skeletons, zombies, spiders, and cave spiders. They all spawn. When the light level is below 8, that's when they're capable of spawning. They're also spawn dependent on the size. I'm missing one here. Spiders. But cave spiders could spawn in a one by one area. Its feet would be this wool block here. The feet being something that's inside the 8 by 8 by 3 cube. Creepers have their feet on the bottom and their head up top. They're one by one by two high mobs. And for example of creepers, the feet would be where the mobs decide to spawn. So the feet could be right here, for example, or the feet could be right there. The feet cannot be right there on this layer despite its head being within the range. The feet is the most important thing that has to be within range of this 8x8x3 by by cube. So back to here. Skeletons have the same size as creepers. Zombies as skeletons. And endermen are 3 high. 3 by 3 by 1 high. And spiders are... Let me make this get black wool real fast. Yeah, thank you. So spiders are one high by three. Jeez, 
lots of mobs, sorry. <laughs> but spiders are one high by three by three long. The feet are right in the middle. And all these glass blocks have to be air for it to spawn, including the feet block. And the feet block has to be within the 8x8x3 eight by eight by cube. So on to passive mo uh, sorry, excuse me. First off, we'll go over to blazes. Blazes are similar to all the other six hostile mobs right there, with the exception that they require a light level of 12 or less instead of 8 or less. So in order to completely light up a blaze spawner, you need a checkerboard pattern of torches as opposed to just a few torches for these mobs. You'll need a lot more for the blaze. So be, be, very, be aware of that when you're making a map with blaze spawners in them. So next are the six passive mobs. Now they have slightly different spawning rules. But first off, these are their spawning sizes. Chickens, pigs, and wolves are all one by one by one. Their feet is the same as their area needed to spawn. Cows, mushrooms, and sheep are one by one by two high. In addition to their feet being free, they'll need a block above their feet being free to fit inside. But all of them can spawn in a one wide by one wide area. In addition to those the spawning sizes, they'll also need a grass block beneath their feet. So in addition to this being their, their feet, this block beneath it, this iron block here, must be grass in order for a chicken to ever spawn there. If I place a chicken spawner nearby, they will not choose this foot spot because it is not grass beneath it. Passive mobs like these six also need a light level of 9 or greater in order to be able to spawn. If it's not 9 or greater, they will not spawn. A specialty passive mob would be an ocelot. And ocelots work the same. They are one wide by one wide by one tall mobs. But in addition to being, uh, in addition to requiring glass, a uh, grass, they could also spawn on leaves. Eerily enough, they could spawn on this leaf block and they could spawn on all leaf types, no matter if it's decaying or not. And hopefully you see that. There we go. They could spawn on leaves just fine. All the other passive bombs cannot spawn on leaves, but these uh, ocelots can have a leaf block beneath their feet. It's also worth noting now that all hostile mobs and all other mobs do not need a block beneath their feet in order to spawn. They could spawn in mid-air just fine. The passive mobs and the passive mobs only are the ones that need a block to spawn on top of. So next, we have the three helper mo uh, mobs. These include iron golems, snow golems, and villagers. They're dying in a desert. And the snow golems and the villagers have the same hitboxes as the other hostile mobs. One high by... one, uh, Two high by one wide by one wide. And golems are two wide by two wide by three tall. And as far as I can tell, this foot is... The feet do not matter on location. The foot could be here. The foot could be here. Um, it's rotational, but the foot is along the bottom. The foot is the one that needs to be free. And the blocks in this pattern above the foot needs to be air and free as well. Another thing to note about all these mobs is that light level does not matter for them at all. They could spawn in lightness and lightness, that's a word, right? <laughs> they could spawn in light or darkness. It does not matter for villagers, golems of and golems of both sorts. Passive mobs do need a light level above nine. Hostile mobs have varying light levels. And the remaining hostile mobs Magma cubes, zombie pigmen, silverfish, and ghast. They also do not depend on light in order to spawn. As you can see, that silverfish, the cubes, 
Yeah, if I had the gas free to spawn, they would be spawning too. And zombie pigmen all spawn. And zombie pigmen all spawn despite it being full daylight and full brightness at sunlight, uh, light level 15. In addition to this, zombie pigmen are two high mobs, with their feet being there and in their head being in this block. Silverfish are one high by one high by one wide. And gas are a hefty five by five by five mob. So you need all of this to be free. Centered around the foot block being on the bottom center at this block right there. Magma cubes have the same size as silver uh, slimes, which are next on the list. Slimes are specialty hostile mobs because they have very special conditions in order to be able to spawn from a spawner. These conditions are they have to be in a slime chunk. A slime chunk is dependent on the seed and slime chunks have 1 in 10 chance of being a slime chunk dependent on the seed so no matter what the seed is for the map they will have the same slime chunks. In addition to being a slime chunk, slimes also need a Y coordinate less than 40 so they have to be below 40. A slime spawner above 40 can never work on any world it has to be below 40 and in a slime chunk. Slimes have three different sizes as so, as the same as magma cubes. The small ones are one by one by one. The medium ones are two by two by two with the feet being rotation the feet being able to be rotated around to the best of my knowledge, same as iron golems feet. And the big slimes require three by three by three with the foot in the bottom center just like gassed. The second of the two uh, three specialty spawners, as I call them, is squid. Squid are very weird. They require being between Y42 and Y64. And it doesn't matter uh, what chunks they are and like that. They just have specific Y coordinates and they must be between 42 and 64 Y. Also, as you can see here, they could spawn in the middle of blocks. They could spawn inside stone. They could, they're spawning inside this glass. Nothing could stop them from spawning, including water. As you can see here, a water tank I built. And they're spawning inside the water and then they could swim around freely. It's You cannot stop a squid spawner from spawning squid at all. Not light level, not placing blocks so their feet don't matter and they're not limited to spawning at all. That one won't die, but there we go. As you can see a squid is dying in there. If you saw, I don't know, but they're very, very weird. <laughs> and lastly, giant spawners don't work. Don't try it, they won't work. Unfortunately, um, I believe it's intended by Mojang that they won't work, but they just will never spawn a giant at all. That's unfortunate, but that's just how they work. Now onto how map makers can use this and important things map makers need to know. The first and the biggest thing I've seen map makers make a mistake on is placing zombies beneath a floor or above a ceiling. Now I just want to point out that these zombies will never spawn on this floor, no matter what the light level is, because their feet will never be free. A uh, zombie's spawner will check one block above it for the feet. The feet will be on the level of the floor itself. And since the floor itself is stone brick, the feet is not free of air. And it won't spawn a zombie at all. It actually won't spawn any mob at all. Because the feet foot is not free. If I break this and the foot becomes free and it's dark enough... Zombies will spawn, and since there's so many spawners, they'll spawn pretty frequently too. But. So frequently, I can't place a block. But if I block it off and their feet cannot find a spot, their zombies won't spawn. In addition to that, zombies and other mobs in the ceiling won't spawn either. 
because their foot is also obstructed. The foot decides uh. to spawn them on this layer, the ceiling layer, and since all those blocks are solid, uh, within that 8 by 8 X and Z coordinates around the spawner, the zombie will never actually spawn. It, the, in both of these cases, they'll only spawn if the the foot spaces are free. As you can see, when you punch a hole in the ground or when you punch a hole in the ceiling, in this case, zombies will also require a spot above their head. So this foot and the air block above them, they require to spawn. So a spot like this won't spawn a zombie because while the feet is free, the air block the block above the zombie is not because the spawner is in its place. So map makers, when you're placing spawners, do not place them in the floors or ceiling because they will not spawn the mobs you want them to spawn. With that being said, there are four ways I can think of. There's probably many more that you could think of on your own. But four ways that you could use a spawner for your map. The first way would be to spawn hostile mobs. Be sure to or spawn any mob at all. Be sure to remember the requirements for each of the special spawners because they are different, and you'll need to really watch out for that. The second way, second thing is this. This is a proximity detector. Since spawners will only spawn with there within 16 blocks of them. They could act as really, really good and consistent proximity detectors. This one here uses sheep spawners to detect when a player is nearby. When a sheep spawns, sheep detects the grass right there. The grass is lit by the lava right here. And sheep have the too high air gap above the grass to spawn. And the pressure plate does not interfere with the feet at all. So when a sheep spawns, they step on a pressure plate, and the pressure plate can do anything, including push the sheep in the lava, which will clear the system and set it for another pulse, as well as signal any redstone current you want, from traps to anything. When a sheep spawns, the torch should turn on, and that could power anything you ever want it to. In addition to proximity detectors, spawners can be used as random generators of a sort. This torch beneath here is a clock, so you can see around here, so it'll blink consistently. And this torch will blink irregularly depending on when a sheep actually spawns. And that this is useful for a varying pulsar, so if you want a random generator of any sort, you could use a spawner system like this to detect random pulses from a machine. The downside of this is you still have to be within 16 blocks of this for the machine to work, but you can also view that as an upside of the system of a random system that uses spawners because pistons and other random generators that require lots of redstone might be taxing to a player, it might lag a world, and spawners will not lag a world because it, the machine is basically turned off when you're not within its range itself. So that's a plus or a con depending on how you look at it or depending on what the map really needs. Also about player sensors, I would like to point out that some spawners, some mob spawners are better than others. A good player sensor might be something like a passive mob because these are 100% reliable. These will only go off if a player is nearby and they will always go off if a player is nearby. This is because passive mobs are the only mobs that can spawn on grass. Through, through, no, sorry, that's false. If no, if no other spawner is nearby, no other mob could spawn on these this grass inside because all hostile mobs are stopped by the lava and the, uh, hostile mobs that are not stopped by light require a spawner to even spawn in the first place, spawn naturally in the first place with the exception of some of them being in the nether but and since this is on grass it, will, it spawns a sheep and since grass 
is required for passive mobs and since there is a possibility of mobs randomly spawning on uh, passive mobs randomly spawning on grass when it's lit however since you could change biomes and this biome is a desert passive mobs will never naturally spawn even though as you can see they're spawning all right from a spawner itself and that's a good point to make spawners ignore biomes so Sheep could spawn, uh, passive mobs could spawn in a desert. Mushrooms did not require mushroom biomes. Ocelots did not require jungles. Wolves did not require their forest or ice biomes. Nether biomes did not require being in the nether. Uh, nether mobs did not require being in the nether. And villagers and golems did not require being in the village itself. So you, biomes do not matter at all for a spawner. Alright, so the last system, the fourth one that I came up with on the spot while playing around and testing spawners is a sort of a light sensor. If you light up this spawner, for example, the zombies will spawn on the opposite side of the wall and if you have this completely enclosed so they can't spawn anywhere else, they could trigger redstone only if the spawner is lit. The downside to this is when it's unlit, the zombie still has a chance of spawning on the opposite side of the wall. So you have to really watch out for that if you want it to go off. After players come through, lit it up, they will only spawn on the opposite side of the wall. But if they have not lit it up yet, they could still spawn on the opposite side of the wall if a player is within 16 blocks, of course. On the upside, this is easily solvable based on how mobs like to spawn. Mobs generally like to spawn much closer to their spawners in question. In this case, the mobs, uh, zombies, most likely will spawn around the zombie spawner. And while they can, want that creeper in there. But this is this pressure plate is on the very corner of the zombie spawner range, and that makes it the most unlikely spot they will spawn. So even though that is completely dark. And the zombie is trying to hunt for a space to spawn at. And the zombie has a space to spawn at, at this one spot in the very corner of their spawn cube. It will take quite a while for the system to actually go off. Granted that this zombie spawner is still spinning. And this is easily changeable by having two spots behind a wall. Or three spots or closer to the spawner or... Like here, the spots are fairly close to the spawner, and here it's fairly far away. So yes, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you perhaps gained something or learned something about spawners that will be helpful in your maps and to avoid common mistakes I've seen in maps like uh, spawners in the floor or ceiling. And as a special treat, or not, not really a treat, but... I will include a link in the description to a zip file containing the schematics for all the uh, for all the spawners you see here. In this world, to get all these spawners, you will need to manual uh you will need to load them as a schematic using World Edit in a server like I'm on now. And to do that, you'll do slash slash schematic space load space mc edit. And then I saved my spawners as a file name spawner dash mob name. So cow. And then I load cow. Then you could paste it and it will paste at your feet. And if you have these schematics in the proper place for world edit to check, that was that will be how you can load them in your world in game. You can also use mods like spawner GUI for single player. I'm not exactly familiar with that mod so I'm not sure if it's single player only. The spawner G GUI will allow you to change the spawners. Also MC edit will allow you to change the spawners. But this is my favorite way because you could do it in game and I also have the ability for all other plugins like the biome plugin which changed the desert for me. But it's just a special treat. If you want to use it, feel free. If you prefer other methods, it's perfectly fine. 
I'm not gonna force anything on map makers because that will be kind of cruel. But check the description for spawners. Thanks for watching. This is Thungon. See ya.